Hi right, folks, today we're going to be uh, putting up the uh, putting up a video on EL ELSR wiring, which goes inside this housing right there. You see this right there, you see that oil? So uh, I just went through and I, I filled up this, uh, this little oil, I guess, cavity that's inside there. So that's this guy right there. And uh, I overfilled it, so it, le <laughs> it leaked out and spilled up, spilled out. So anyway, that's what we're going to be working on today. So let's, uh, we'll, let's get to it. We'll, we'll get this end cap off and go fish the wiring out, and we'll get started on it. All right, so I got that cover off, and here's the wiring that's going to come out here, there, to get these switches all wired in. I'm going to try and straighten some of these out. They are all labeled, and I had taken some nice pictures. So let's see if we can't get some of these going here. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I need a little light. I can't see the end of the... All right, I'm gonna just grab me a little flashlight. Always a lot easier pulling the wires out than putting them back in. Come on, you. Okay, so now the next wire will be Okay, so that's 14. So I'm going to write 14 on this one. So wiring up the um, electric lead screw. So I didn't show you... Um, hooking these wires up uh, when I took this apart I took the switches and I just you know wrote on the uh, switches which wire number it was so what we got to do now is get these wires sort of shoved back into this cavity here so that there's not too much excess wiring um, actually I think too there's a kind of a break in this wire not a break, but the insulation has um, got a tear in it, so I don't know if it goes all the way through. It doesn't appear to. Okay, just, you know, that outer shell. So let's get these fed through there. Yeah, I'm not happy with the way this is looking right now. All right, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this 
recording off because I'm kind of low on battery. So I'm going to turn the recording off, go through and organize these, and I'll bring it back as I'm finishing the, the assembly. Okay, guys, after about a half an hour fiddling, I got this all wired up. So the issue was I had to go back to some old photos that I took to see how the routing actually was done. So this is how it was done. So what this, what's going on here, so basically if I have this, um, this selector knob in neutral and I turn on my lathe, so you can see what's going on. So if I pull it up, this, this um, cam is going. There, well, there's a cam in here and it's pushing on this actuator. So it's making and breaking that switch. Now, if I put, if I put it on right hand, uh, left hand, so you see what's happening here. So this one's going to go out at the same time this one goes in. So you see these two? They're sort of going in alternating motion there. If I turn this over to right hand, and I do the same thing, you can see that these, now this one and this one are going. Neutral, again, only this one. Left hand, this one and this one. Now if I change direction on my um, switch, uh, on my lever over here, you see how it toggles back and forth. And if I bring it over to right, does the exact opposite. So I think uh, somebody's been in here before, uh, before I got the machine. This switch looks different. I think the switch probably went bad and they replaced it. Um, or it just could have been a different kind of switch. But definitely this has been worked on. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. I just can see that someone's worked on it. All right, we'll keep going. I got, I'm going to put the uh, the cover on there. All right, so I'm put this cover on. Um, see right here, I got a new gasket from Monarch. It was pretty inexpensive. Um, the other gasket was there, but it was basically. Uh, Oil soaked, very, very delicate. So decided it needs a new one. I have reason to believe that these screws were replaced at one point. They're not long enough. Yeah, basically get about a turn or two out of them, except for one. This guy here was a little, little bit longer. So I'll probably change these out. So my camera just said something went wrong. And it shut off, so I don't know how much of it we missed, but we put this cover on. We're going to put this end cover back on. So we're getting pretty close to being able to put power on this thing. I've got to put the tubes back in it, uh, do a little bit more wiring work. I actually had a um, viewer ask me about doing a little bit more work on, or a little bit more filming on the electrical part. So I'm going to do that. Okay. 
what's happening here? Okay. I'll probably come back and just touch up where some of the paint is chipped off from the screwdriver. When I took this uh, cover off, here tucked inside there was a um, like a wiring schematic, which was kind of weird. And then you can't see it there, but there's a bottom cover here. I took that cover off, and inside there was an entire packet of the, all the original um, manuals, schematics. Um, you know, specifications and so forth in a brown manila folder down there. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so what we have is my little equipment shed that I built in the fall. And so I've had these cars for probably 15 or 20 years, and they've been hanging around waiting to get worked on. Um, I picked up a couple of these, um, uh, you know, four-post lifts so I could stack the cars up. So that car up there is a 28 or 29 Plymouth. Uh, doesn't run. Put some boat trailer tires on it, uh, wheels that happen to fit the lug pattern so they can move it around as the uh, wooden spoke wheels were rotted off. This right here... Um, I don't play chess, but this is my chess game right here. So this is a 1987 Jaguar. You can see it's really dusty. It's been stored in a barn for probably the last 10 years or so. So uh, anyone who has any experience with these Jaguars knows that uh, every time you get into one, it will be an exercise in uh, patience for the operator that, to determine or, or to figure out what um, electrical anomalies will occur and how you know how you're going to be able to fix it it just cracks me up i mean you see this thing right here it's got a um sunroof on it and in the trunk is a little uh, i guess a little tool kit and then the tool kit's a little crank so that you can manually crank the sunroof closed if you happen to have it open and the rain starts because the chances that the sunroof will close under its own electrical power you know is probably 50 50 some days it works some days it doesn't you can replace the switch, the wiring, the motor. None of that seems to matter. So <laughs> I don't know what these British folks were thinking of, but it's really uh, it's it's entertaining if you if it doesn't you know give you a heart attack. So uh, this is my '56 uh, International Farmall Cub that I restored last year. I think I had this in one of the other videos. So it's sat outside for this past winter. But this is the next project right here, which is. A 1961 Impala bubble top. Again, you see it was in storage for, this one was in storage for 12 years. Um, it's complete and rust free. I have all the parts. Right now it has a uh, 396 and a turbo 400 in it, which are not original. It originally had a small block and a two speed power glide, but that's going to come out and get replaced with an LS and um, in an overdrive uh, automatic. So, um, yeah, as soon as I get wrapped up with the, uh, the Monarch, I'm going to start on this, and we're probably going to have a, all kinds of interesting little machining projects to get this, this guy done. It'll probably take a while because it's, I'm going to uh, media blast the whole thing, pull the uh, body off the frame, and, and do a really nice job on it. So, anyway, just thought you might be interested in you know, what's coming down the line.